I'm Alan Watts, and I'm an author and researcher into geopolitics, really, and history. So I follow where the world has been, the techniques were used to bring them to those stages, and I plan them to where we are today and where, how the future is planned. I've researched uh, so many books. I've got a library of my own. Uh, I like paperback books, or at least hardback books, because they're permanent records of the past. And if you can't understand the past, you understand the present or the future. I've also been in the music business, uh, heavily involved for years. And um, I saw how culture creation works uh, from the top and how generations were swayed into new fashions, uh, new ideas. I've been following the histories of what's now called the New World Order for many, many years. And I try to go into the books written by the big players, the technocrats themselves, those famous people like the Kissingers, the Brzezinskis and so on, the Huxleys, the Lord Bertrand Russells, who all worked for the same organizations. And I came to the conclusion, really, there was only one big organization with many subcategories. These boys tend to publish the world that they saw coming into view. And they wrote it in their own hand, basically. They told us where they were taking the world. And when you start studying these things about the age of 14, 15, or even younger, and reading their books, and you live long enough, you will see that the world has turned out exactly as they planned. Uh, this can't be coincidence. And who can uh, really write up a wish list and make it happen globally, unless there is an organization very, very powerful, probably the, mo the only organization really on the planet, an organization that can fund all sides, all oppositions, and using the synthesis of conflicting parties, they can literally make the world come into view as they planned. The plan in centuries, and the astonishing thing is when you go into the United Nations, which was loosely based on the Soviet system, they plan certain parts of their agenda in 50-year plans, some in 100-year plans, and some even in 150-year plans for different aspects of it. The Russells, the Huxleys, and so on, Brzezinski's, also use the same terminology with their long-term plans. And you've got to understand, too, that nothing in culture comes out from the grassroots. Uh, even Plato talked about that thousands of years ago. He said that if it was a grassroots movement uh, really coming from the people, then those in charge, the dominant minority, would lose control. Therefore, every change in culture, right down to fashion and music, and this was written 2,300 years ago, had to be authorized from the top and promoted from the top if it fitted with the, the continuance of control over the public. And these are sciences which were taught down through the ages, are still taught today to the big players, and they've used it to the full in the 20th century, now into the 21st century with the use of television, mass communications, radio, etc. Everything has been given to us for the appropriate time and stage in the actual planning. And uh, for those who are coming into this kind of study, it's best to go into the books, as I say, written by the big players themselves. They love to boast. Yeah, Kissinger's got lots of books out there. So has Brzezinski. Uh, these are probably two of the master players in geopolitics. Try to stay away from all the conspiracy books. They can, they're also put out there on purpose. Very fascinating books. But they'll lead you in circles forever without giving you the overall picture to the fact that every generation has a purpose up until this present time. And in a post-industrial era, these big boys have decided, and their masters too, that we are simply superfluous and they no longer need us. Hence, we have big foundations coming forward and organizations like the Optimum Population Trust who have decided to come out openly and demand that government start radically reducing the populations. We are now the useless eaters, as Lord Bertrand Russell called us. Our ideas, our opinions on everything, our worldview, even to do with population uh, and the fake view that we're overpopulated, is all projected to us by the mainstream media, 
working in concert for their masters and we begin to parrot what we hear through repetition and that's so important as repetition uh, with slogans and catchphrases and once you hear it happening in your own local group your milieu then you will you, you know it's working and the camera can make anything appear to be true you'll see that in India for instance they always use the same streets of Bombay to make you think that you're massively overcrowded and that's the impression people think of the entire Indian continent. The Indian continent is huge with thousands and thousands of miles of forest where no one lives. It's the same in Africa too. China being the model state for the world for instance uh, put into effect the United Nations policy to the extreme with its population reduction and the movements of people off of the rural areas into cities. They said that years ago. Uh, right now they're in the process of moving 200 million more people off into the major cities and that's the major newspapers. The cities appear to be crowded because everyone's being moved into them. In the Western world since the 1950s, again under the, the, the term of urban sprawl and stopping urban sprawl, the Western countries also signed agreements to do no more building in the outskirts and the, uh, of the major cities. All existing buildings have to be used or else knocked down and replaced with even higher ones. But regardless, with the immigration and the free flow of people now from third world countries, the Western countries appear to be overcrowded. And yet the UN's own statistics show, and sort of the national census show, uh, that the Europeans, for instance, Canadians and Americans uh, who have been here for a couple of hundred years are actually in decline. So the overpopulation problem is simply an image projected by the media as more and more people are crammed into the same cities and they bring more immigrants in to fill them. But I also realized the system of schooling when I was going to school was bogus. Uh, the histories were bogus and I was very, very lucky to have access to very old libraries very old libraries, town libraries. Uh, some of them had reference books going back into the 1700s, written at the time. When you compared the histories I was being taught in school to the histories that were written at the time, they were completely different. You had a deeper understanding of how geopolitics had been used in the past to even populate the country of Canada. Uh, London couldn't get immigrants to, to go off into the new colonies. What they did for Australia was to create so many laws that you couldn't help but break them, and poverty, and therefore stealing a loaf of bread to feed you or your family would get you deported to Australia with your family. That's how they populated Australia, crime. They created the laws for crime. With Scotland, they had a rebellion, which could have been rigged, and I often think it was, and the whole of Scotland was punished, and they, they deported millions of the Scots off to the Americas to populate the Americas. This is geopolitics in action. That's how it works. And whole peoples are often moved from their land because the elite masters want them elsewhere to be productive for them, themselves, the masters. When you look at the strategy for the US and Canada, again, long-term strategy, long-term planning, you'll find uh, that the big Corporations of their day, the Hudson's Bay companies, the Fraser companies, were given charters to own the land before Canada was Canada or U.S. was the U.S. They were simply called the Americas. These were private international corporations that had the power of life and death over everyone who lived within their areas. The queen or the king had a consulate in every country, a uh, lieutenant general or Governor General, they call them. We still have one in Canada today who represents the Queen. They have all the powers over life and death of subjects under that governor. How they stopped rebellion in the past was to give us an idea of what they called democracy. They knew from the, the Chartist movement in Britain, for instance, and elsewhere, other countries, people were demanding rights for the first time. And so once again, they gave us champions to speak on our behalf which calmed the people down thinking for, for the first time in history the people were involved in their own destiny creation. 
and nothing was further from the truth. Because the planners knew that once you bring people into a country or a continent, create real wealth for them and get businesses going, clear the land, drain the swamps, and so on, they can take it all away from you through laws 200 years down the road. And that's what's happening now. Long-term geopolitics once more. And if you think I'm kidding about this, go into the history books written at the time. They're still there in some of the libraries. And you can also go into the art of geopolitics. There's even videos on YouTube on Brzezinski boasting about how he set up the Taliban in Afghanistan. You'll see him encourage them to fight the Soviets at that time in the 1970s. And he actually says, yours is a holy war. This man, who obviously believes in nothing but himself and his own peer group, is encouraging another, another people to go and fight a holy war, a jihad. And he uses these terms against the Soviets, knowing full well, once it was set up and it was backed by the CIA, that 10, 15 years down the road, they'd be a problem. And then they'd have to go to war with the very group they'd created to fight the Soviets. That's what's happening today. Long-term strategies. Well, that's how history has always been run. If you can go into the books where you find the British Home Office is mentioned, study the history of the diplomatic corps. Because the diplomats were spies. They would go into territory, set up embassies, collect intelligence data for future invasions. Their job was also to try and grab the rights of minerals, gold, silver, etc. across the planet. All natural resources and find ways, long-term strategy, to either bribe it off the present rulers of those countries or else create an ultimate war with them and simply steal it under the guise of occupation. We're living through a stage today, as I say, where this is all coming to a culmination. This is the post-industrial era. We're post-technical, uh, almost, in the West. It's all done in other countries, all the technical stuff. And Brzezinski himself talks about the technocratic era where the future will be for an elite with a highly trained bureaucracy underneath them and scientific elite who will not need the human labor that they've needed in the past. Human labor that, that is excessive and is unemployed and is hungry is now a threat to that established elite. So now they're doing something which they they can only do to the human species. They don't need to do this with animals. With animals, just go out and hunt them and kill them. We are the only species that has to be convinced to allow ourselves, for the good of all, to be sterilized and bring down the population through abortion on one end and euthanasia on the other, under the guise to save the planet. And unfortunately, with the massive propaganda campaigns that are all over media, in every country at the same time, with all the big foundations backing them with unlimited financing. Remember, the two, the foundations are owned by the international bankers themselves. Then they can pull all of this off, and unfortunately, it really is working. In kindergarten now, you walk into a kindergarten anywhere in Europe or the Americas, and you'll see the rainbow uh, inside every sing single one of them, You'll see all the terms about the world. Here's the globe. We're all global. And you'll see the green messages everywhere, everywhere, and how sacrifice will have to be made to save the world and the planet and future generations of society. Sacrifice. You tie that together with the institutions that com were comprised of the, the Fabian Society. It was a member of the Royal Institute for International Affairs. That's one society. The Council on Foreign Relations is also the same thing as the Royal Institute for International Affairs. They are what Thatcher and Professor Carl Quigley called the parallel government. They have told us what the future is going to be. Uh, some of their members have even written books about the need to cull off massive amounts of the population by any means possible. And so we see this final stage being pushed as they convince us that we are the problem.